Welcome to Keep Your Torch Lit. Sophia, I actually have something to tell you. I have a bomb to drop. What? We're interviewing Katie. Yeah! yeah! Roger, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. I just came up with it. I was like, wait, this is perfect. Off the dough. I love it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So we are interviewing the latest boot from Survivor Michigan season six, Katie Boo. So sad. But happy to be here. Happy to be talking to you guys. Happy to get to the nitty gritty and clear up a lot of things from this season already. Yeah. I mean, last episode was crazy. There were so many things so going crazy. on. Um, like Roger mentioned at the beginning, the bomb dropped um towards the end, but we sort of want to hear your perspective, like um, just like what was that like? As from a player's perspective, the bomb dropping. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, <laughs> well, when you're kind of the center of the bomb, um, it's definitely a different perspective. Um, definitely, I, you know, I actually was, I went back and rewatched the video of Ian and I when he came to tell me in my um, bedroom. And that was like, maybe two and a half, three hours before tribal, just to give people a, a sense of timeline there. And I'm going to go through the full timeline of that, of that episode alone. But um, I, I think it was just immediate, like, like panic mode, but not even, uh, I didn't have enough time to panic. It was immediate, like, okay, damage control. What can I do? How are we going to approach this? And I mean, it was Ian and I that came up with the the rocks plan together, which like, you know, rewatching it, I am kind of like, why did I think that would work? <laughs> why? Why did I not? I don't think I ever seriously considered that someone would flip on a revote, let alone the initial vote. But again, timeline of it all. Ugh. There's there's so much that like the the editing of it was not the accurate timeline and it actually changes some of the uh some of the meaning behind a lot of what Ian and I did because Ian and I actually met before he and Noah told everyone where in the episode it's actually showed oh. them telling everyone and then Ian comes to tell me Ian came to tell me before he met with Noah and Grace to tell Justin to tell mm -hmm. and Ian's actually texting me the entire time that they're talking to Justin and letting me know how it's going because we had already solidified the plan of we just need to get everyone on our respective sides solid mm -hmm. voting the other person so that was actually kind of Ian's motivation going into but then they went to Ellie five minutes before tribal and that I think that kind of that kind of screwed me there but um yeah, I mean, it was it was wild. It was frantic. It was exhilarating, though, because it was like that is when the game was happening. You know, I was already excited for that tribal because I finally felt like I was getting to play some strategy, coming up with the plan to um, split votes on like having all five former obsidians vote Ian so that we could tie the vote and see where old Sokka was actually voting to kind of call them on their bluff a little bit. Um, and another thing timeline wise from the challenge to the actual tribal, we had like a full week. So oh, wow. there was just, oh, wow, that's a lot of time. It was a lot of time for shenanigans to happen. And of course, all of the shenanigans did not happen until six hours before tribal essentially as, as classic naturally <laughs> yeah i would say most of the week was spent with old obsidian trying to figure out where the obsidian idol was to see if we could really take that into consideration going into tribal you see in the episode excuse me you see in the episode um quesadilla five doing the the tarowski method as some like to call it of writing an X on a paper and then everyone just being honest. So we did that with Obsidian and then, or Quesadilla. And then we were like, okay, maybe someone else on Obsidian has it. Um, that would be Justin, Ellie, or T-Rex. And um, what, 
I, I I can understand why it was not put in the episode because I have no idea how it would have been shown at all. But we actually made a Google form and <laughs> and essentially like got in our old Obsidian group chat, got everyone to fill out. Like I sent out the Google form at the same time, shared the responses with everyone so everyone could see it and made sure everyone filled it out and submitted responses at the same time. And then we looked and nobody had nobody had the idol. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you could, in the post uh, credits bonus scenes, you see us calling T-Rex and that was definitely <laughs> somewhat of a last ditch effort thinking T-Rex maybe just was really trying to hide it from us, but obviously, obviously not. It, it was, everyone was being so honest. I don't know if, I, I like to think that if someone had it, it would have come out at that point. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, it also became so hardcore, just Obsidian versus Osaka, Osaka, <laughs> Saka, um, Obsidian versus Saka. Uh, once it got word from Justin that Ian was pushing me, Taylor, or Lindsay, I mean, it was just all gung ho. Like Ian was the only Saka name that Justin would write down. Ian's name was the only one that we could get the numbers on to even mm -hmm. tie the vote. Mm -hmm. um, and after a certain point, that was the same thing on Saka's side, where my name was the only one that they could get all five people to write down. So, yeah, it was it was wild. <laughs> short, long story yeah. short, Sophia, it was wild. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. I have a question about because watching the like challenge was interesting and um i know it was a lot of like just kind of showing ian and noah and grace like being like should we throw the challenge yeah like what was that like from your perspective because i mean there's like a moment where taylor was like we didn't want this or maybe it was ellie saying that they were like not fully on board um like did the girls on Copaca want to throw the challenge or was that just mostly like an ian thing yeah, so <laughs> another situation where it was just kind of a whirlwind. And in the moment, it made sense. Once we took some time to think about it afterwards, um, it was kind of like, mm, maybe not have been the best choice. But in the moment, I mean, definitely Ian was the one leading it, mm -hmm. leading the push. But it was absolutely, it, I can't speak for Lindsay and Taylor or Ellie on this one, but in my head, George and Jack didn't want to go to tribal again because they had just been to tribal. Mm -hmm. So looking out for our alliance, we didn't want to send them with Sokka. Um, and then, but we also thought of it as wanting to save Justin. We, what probably wasn't shown was we were talking to Justin just as much as Ian was talking to Noah and Grace over there. Mm -hmm and getting his read on the situation and him being worried about going to tribal. And we were like, if we go with you, it'll be easy numbers. We would be able to save you hands down if we went with you. And the boys of Quesadilla just went to tribal. So why don't the girls take over for a little bit? And that was kind of like, in my head, that's what we were doing. And wasn't too concerned in the moment like realistically all of those goals were achieved i was just the collateral damage <laughs> so real. Justin. um but it's yeah like in in the moment it made sense because there was no way it a if any of us were actually trying to compete in that challenge there was no way kopaka was winning kopaka was going to tribal either way yeah, I have thought back on it and thought, could we have convinced um, George and Jack and all of them to go to tribal with us? Ian would have never let that happen. He yeah. would have been convinced that we were going to vote him off, even though we probably would have voted T-Rex. Like that, mm -hmm. that would have been the easy vote at that mm -hmm. point. Um, but also, as you see in the episode, George and Jack were taking the challenge extremely seriously. We tried to call them over to talk, and they just, they were like, no, we're busy playing Capture the Flag. Um, yeah, did, they, like, like, did they realize that, like, 
people were trying to throw this challenge because it sounded like they were really confused and they thought yeah, they had no. won the challenge. But what, like, what did they think was happening with everybody talking? I, I truly don't know. <laughs> I, you know, wouldn't it be nice to be in one of those boys' brains for two seconds? Um, Ace was like, when you guys told him that that you all threw through the challenge, George looked so sad. <laughs> he was like, because, I thought we did it. Yeah, exactly. Because they were so focused on strategizing themselves. I don't even think that they realized <laughs> Ian is the reason that they won. Ian brought yeah. Saka's bandana over to their thing, threw it in there, and that's why they won. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> it was, no, it was wild. I don't know what world, what the Lulu world they were living in in that moment. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it, it was, yeah, that was funny getting to reveal that to them. Um, but no, they, I, they clearly, they did not realize. They thought everyone else was strategizing or something, which like, we were, but not for the purposes of winning the challenge, for the purposes of mm. what's happening post-challenge. So mm. so when you and Sokka decided to throw the challenge in your mind, who like who did you think was going to go home or who did you want to go home? That I was kind of confused about. Um, Thages or Ellie. It okay. was... And was that kind of like a consensus from like the other people on soccer? Like it would be pages from their side or Ellie from your side, and it didn't really matter which. It was Ian was telling us that they would vote Thages. Why mm. we took Ian at his word? Again, heat of the moment. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, but that Ian was saying no, they would absolutely vote Thages. And uh, keep in mind. And actually, this is where we can probably like go back to the beginning. But like thinking me thinking Ian and Noah are with me, hands down. I'm that's where I'm I'm taking Ian at his word because I'm like, OK, if I'm going to tribal with Ian and Noah, I'm good at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're saying they just like at, also Taylor, Lindsay and I had zero interaction with any of old Sokka other than Ian real like other than ian and noah at this mm -hmm. point so when they're like thages i'm like cool i have no idea what thages is and mm -hmm. from episode uh, two or three i think three yeah episode three where they just like tackle stephanie at that challenge obsidian was already just like out on thages <laughs> so um it was that was that is what Ian was telling us. And then of course, back of mind for Taylor, Lindsay, and I was like, uh, like maybe, yeah. maybe Ellie. Um, obviously not always ideal, but it was when you get down to certain numbers on a tribe and it's just like who's on the outs. Yeah. yeah. So um, but yeah, I I feel like I got a backup. I feel like I got to back it up because seeing the comments on YouTube, seeing the discord, the live chat while, as these episodes come out, it's clear there's some misunderstandings of the dynamics going into the game again with timelines and stuff that I think might be able to help clarify some, some people's perceptions and some people's questions here. Um, so if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to go straight from the beginning. If you guys have yeah. questions as I, as I go along, feel free to jump in because I'm, I'm happy to answer any at all. Um, to start with the casting of this and deciding to cast me, Ian, Noah, and George. So keep in mind, viewers, for Ian and I, this is our second semester senior year. I've been a part of this club since my sophomore year. Ian has already edited season two, is editing season three, and is well a part of it. As, as you could see from the episode, uh, he thinks he's better than everyone. He, <laughs> he, thinks, he thinks he can play better because he's watched everyone else play. Um, it was, there was no way I was not playing during my last semester. There was no way Ian wasn't playing. George, you kind of can't not cast George and if if it's his only semester to play if that's his only semester coming back to campus uh -huh. and available like 
Um, and then Noah, and I know people feel some type of way about Noah. It's like you're obsessed with him or something. Um, the, <laughs> the, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think it made sense to cast Noah. Um, you put two, two former producers on two tribes. Um, and to clarify some of the dynamics too. So Ian and I, Ian was my number one going into this game. 100%. Ian and I have been mm -hmm. best friends since freshman year yeah. of college and had been talking about playing together because we both knew we were going to be applying our last semester. Um, I actually knew Noah the least at this point. George and I had interacted previously. I was helping out with uh, season one marketing and was pretty like uh, – tight with him during that. And then obviously was texting over holiday break before the season started. Um, so Noah, I mean, Noah had only been dating Bailey for, I mean, maybe like a year at this point. Um, and I really only knew him in the context of like, yeah, he was a producer on all stars with me. And, but like very much like Bailey's boyfriend, mm -hmm. Bailey's one of my yeah. besties. Um, and from, from like almost like week one, I had already caught Noah lying to me. So I like, of the four of us, Noah was on the outs for me, but um, the four of us had talked. Noah, Ian and I had been talking about how to approach being former producers the entire time. And people were asking, did they not communicate how they were gonna do this when Ian starts walking in day one and being like, I don't know what Survivor is. Hello, what's your name? Ian and I shaking hands, the most awkward interaction <laughs> I've ever fucking seen. Can I swear on this? Yes, please okay, do. Cool. Ever, most awkward fucking thing. Um, <laughs> the, and uh, to clarify though, both Noah and I, before season six started, were like, Ian, that's a dumb idea. Don't do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to try to hide too much. Don't do that. And what does he do? He still does it. So we don't have control over Ian immediately. Right. I mean, who does? You know, um, Ian. it's Ian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was communication. There was a plan, a, a potential plan going into it. And essentially the plan was, all right, every man for himself, mm -hmm. handle it how you mm -hmm. want to handle it. I was definitely of the opinion that it's my last semester, senior year. I'm not gonna go above and beyond trying to hide scrub all of my social medias i'm very active on social media i was like that's not going to be worth right. my time I'll put my accounts on private if people see me tagged and stuff that's why i'm like if y'all see me in socials like i'm friends with these people yeah, yeah like i helped out every once in a while obviously like my name is in the credits of season two <laughs> i'm on the keep your torch Lit podcast previously so like yeah was i a little messy was i a little that lackadaisical about all of that sure mm -hmm. but I also trusted in the fact that these are all new people and I am not to toot my own horn I'm phenomenal at making friends <laughs> um, I like I knew I was gonna be able to get people to trust me just by talking to them and work like working on that mm -hmm. and I think that's also why going into the season with George and my situation, which I would like to clarify, given all of the discussion around my boot episode of when did it start? When didn't it start? Yes. George and I were talking previous, like before the season. Yes. We had crushes on each other leading up to the season, but we both sat down. I know I sat down and I was like, listen, I've been waiting to play this game ever since I started. Like, I applied season one, or I, I forgot to apply to season one, but I meant to apply <laughs> to season one. And so I've been waiting to play ever since then. I do not, I was like, I want to prioritize my game. Like yeah. I'm having fun with you, but like, I, I don't want to get too serious right away. I want to play the game. I don't want to be. And then of course, you know, we're playing the game together. That's going to make us trust each other even more. That's going to, build up our relationship even more so it we were not officially dating when the game started we were talking it was definitely talking stages 
basically dating, but no labels. I was still like, let's wait, let's pump the brakes because if we start playing this game and it's not going to work out because we're playing the game together, let's not make it more difficult than it needs to be. Yeah. But it was working out. So then a month into the game or like a couple weeks into the game, we made it official. And that's why on, on my boot episode, I was like, it's our one month anniversary kind of thing. So take that viewers as you will interpret it however you want in my head we were not dating until into the show but our relationship was not built from the show because we had been talking previously and kind of like mm -hmm. in talking stages prior so mm -hmm. i very much was just trying to twist words and make people think like no it's not that big of a deal <laughs> during but like it mm -hmm. and it was it's tricky starting a new relationship while playing a game like survivor because mm -hmm. yeah there's i wanted to tell ian about us multiple weeks in a row basically ever since ian and i were on the same tribe i wanted to tell ian but because that would affect george's game and because um because we're in this new relationship it's it's a major like test of trust and as much as you want to say that the trust in the game and what we do in the game isn't going to affect the relationship outside of it, that's just not the right. case. And I wasn't going to risk it. I So that sucked because I definitely would have played the game differently had I not been tied to George in that way. Yeah, um, right. yeah but that is, that's what happened. And here we are. At least it made for a good episode, though, right? So <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, wow. So I'm trying to think of all the questions I have. Okay, so <laughs> let's fast forward kind of back to like um, pre, I guess, pre before the bomb is dropped. Um, was there like, because obviously there's a convention where you say like you are worried that Ian might like have a like mm -hmm. idea that, um, you know. Yeah that you two are dating and like you're super close to Ian you have a lot of friends that are also friends with Ian so were there measures that you took to like make sure that Ian didn't find out like did you go to like John or whoever go like you cannot tell Ian or like what was the vibe with that yeah so this is a point of contention for me if I'm being completely honest I still get oh. upset with John about this but basically so Another dynamic that I'm not sure is completely clear. My living situation this year is I'm living with Leia, iconic Leia, mm -hmm. and um, our good friend Jimmy, who is actually in All Stars as Leia's loved one during the loved one challenges. So that is who I'm living with. Ian is living with Cooper, and then John, and then three, four other guys. And basically our houses are like across the street from each other basically like maybe like a block away and i mean we we basically look like we are at each other's places all the time i again was not going to go over the top in trying to hide stuff right. knowing me i was just like that's going to be way too difficult that's going to put way too much strain on what i'm trying to do this semester so i told jimmy and leia about george and i ahead of time um i was like please don't tell ian Jimmy and everyone knows how Leia feels about Survivor. She hates it, which also kind of sucked because we were living together and I lived with her both through season one and all stars and was there for her. But she was like, I don't want any part of this when you're yeah. playing. And I was like, cool. Um, and Jimmy is also very much like anti-survivor. So they, they were like, cool, new guy. We'll see him around. But like, I, I don't care enough right. to care about this. Mm -hmm. um, eventually told Cooper, because I trust Cooper. And I know Cooper knows the game. Cooper respects the game. So he wouldn't say anything. John is not related to the game at all. And the only reason I told John was because we went out to Rick's on my birthday, which was like week two of the game. And I... <laughs> Ian was not with us. He was busy, whatever. It worked out. But I had George pick us up because it was snowy. My birthday's in January. I I was like, yeah. can you pick us all up and drive us home? And John 
drunk John was like, why is George picking us up? And I, I was also drunk and I was like, oh my gosh, like giddy. And I'm like, okay, you can't tell anyone all this mm. stuff. John doesn't fucking care. John has more loyalty to Ian. He lives in Ian's house. And yeah, so yeah. another, another tidbit, Ian actually found out about George and I week two. Um, I know it's edited where it's like he finds out week five or something. Ian actually found out week two. And because of John, but also because it's our friend group. And when there's like frustrations or like say like Leia was complaining about me not being around very much. And she's like, oh, she's always at George's and stuff. And Ian's like, hmm, why? why? <laughs> um, and she's like, oh, da, da, da. and Leia, not that great of a liar either, unless she has it like planned out, like not in the moment. So, you know, like things like that happen. Is it annoying? Is it frustrating? Yeah. But I also, I, I didn't bother to hide too much like that. So it is what it is at this point. But um, yeah, it, it was definitely an interesting dynamic. I think I was, I, I felt more betrayed because it felt like everyone in my friend group was for Ian's game over mine. Mm because of that, because of not caring to keep that from Ian. And that was, that was disheartening a little bit. Cause even I would try to talk to Cooper about it and Cooper's like, so in the middle, classic Cooper. So in the middle um, that, that it's like, he's like, I'm not going to say anything that you say, but I'm also not going to tell you whether, cause it got to a point where I was like, does Ian know? And he goes, I can't tell you that. So but, like, I was pretty confident week four, week five that Ian yeah. knew. And mm. that's, again, it's because Ian and I got on the same tribe on Kopaka, and I wanted to tell Ian. I was like, I can't. This is, like, getting annoying with my life outside of Survivor. Mm -hmm. um, but, again, all the nuances, all the – yeah, yeah. So it <laughs> did I try to hide it, like, kind of, but not really. And it it is what it is, you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's like the the nuance of playing Survivor, like college Survivor, especially is just like mm -hmm. as much as you want to be like, oh, my God, like my personal life and my Survivor life are so separated. But it's like when you've been in a friend group and you've been in this club for so long, it's impossible. It just is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it, I think it's an element of the game that. Um, makes what well, it's just what makes college survivor like special and like just so interesting and i feel like this season and your relationship with george is just like what makes is what's making season six super super interesting and how the dynamic is changing i um i love it as a viewer that's like knew yeah. nothing pretty much nothing about season six going into it like love love loved it um, but at the end of the day, you know, you gotta like trust these people and like yeah. be friends with them. Um, and I actually, I will say something I forgot to mention. We also, George and I did not tell the producers that we were like in ooh. like kind of dating before the game started because we didn't want the producers to know before deciding who was on which tribes. No, I, mean, I assume because you guys ended up on the same tribe. So I was like, they must not have known. Yeah, no, they did not know. And we like revealed it. We filmed after that first day, we filmed a video like talking about how we got to where we were and like sent it to the producers. And we're like, tee -hee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like fun fact. And everyone was like, huh? what? like no one, no one expected, which it's also so funny thinking now back to episode six of everyone else's reactions to <laughs> George and I dating. Uh, wild. I think it's a testament to our social games that no one close enough to us had any idea or like mm -hmm. genuinely thought that that couldn't be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it yeah. sounds like people only knew through outside sources and not like anything that was happening within the game, which means you guys were doing a good job at hiding it. Yeah, exactly. E even when Ian found out from John, his mind was blown. He was like, literally what? 
like mm -hmm. that doesn't like sure that makes sense based on all the pieces that I've gathered but like no so yeah I mean props to us for that but <laughs> but otherwise you know yeah so um do you have anything else like that like you're you've been dying to talk about before we ask other questions um let's see i did i did make a list of things to talk about <laughs> so pregame situation there was a slight discrepancy about me being cast because i guess um my written application i i was being silly goofy i was in a silly goofy mood when i filled out the application and some producers were not happy with me about not taking the application seriously so i was just like guys come on obviously i'm gonna play this game seriously but that's neither here nor there i got on the season um playing with living with lay and cooper clarity on mine george's relationship status hiding george and me oh my gosh so the the one thing I did try to do was like change George's name in my phone, but like, I, I could not explain where my brain was working because in my head, I didn't want to, like, I wanted there to be a George and I chat for like and the game for strategy. Yeah. And then a chat for like our relationship. Yeah. Um, and like, we have the clip of Noah being like, I changed everyone's name in my phone um i i wanted it to be separate in the event that someone looked over my shoulder and saw me talking game but then also saw me being like relationshipy in the chat right. i wanted to keep them separate and but like it i couldn't in my phone like i would need a completely separate number for george to make two different things like that so i so i just left it as george <laughs> when i could have just changed his name and now like looking back on it i'm not sure why didn't do that see my thought is like there are other like you don't have to like text you there's other things you can do like other like instagram messages or something like that well and exactly and that's the thing is also like half the time george and i were talking strategy in person because a, another right. tidbit so it's like my house was right here george's house was here and then across the street over here was ian's house Oh, it's the wow. survivor block apparently it was the survivor mm -hmm. block yeah so Wait, then like, I feel like it always happens there's this kind of like a conglomerate of survivor people even if it doesn't it's like it just happens every time yeah and it was like ian would get so weirded out that i would be over at georgia i'm like we you realize we're playing a game right like george and i are on the same tribe you think i'm not gonna go when come right. on now yeah let's be real let's be real um let's see uh yeah so i also just kind of want to go through quesadilla and the dynamics there i i saw some questions on discord about what it was like george and i being in that dynamic together and what the dynamics there were but it really was from episode one the um like I knew I needed to get in a car and George was like, we need to get in a car. I was like, yeah, that's where, that's where the alliance happens. That's where like day one walk with people in the same direction. Don't mm -hmm. go home. It doesn't matter if it's in the opposite direction or not go with someone. So yeah. Lindsay and Jack, perfect. Um, worked out. I think, I mean, you can, you get, that sense and like quesadilla was actually fully formed by like week two week three yeah, i know i was it's gonna say i think we got it kind of later but like i assumed it formed a bit earlier yeah yeah um which makes sense because it's like other stuff that was happening the other tribals right. but um yeah quesadilla was formed pretty early everyone loved taylor between Lindsay, jack george and i um and i mean Again, Quesadilla had no idea that George and I were dating, like didn't really believe it at first because um, George and I, like anytime we met in George's apartment, George and I made a point to like not sit next to each other. Um, like we were, we were very aware and I mean, it was easy because we did make these genuine connections with Lindsay, Taylor and Jack to um, build up our own personal games. So 
you know, like when we were together as quesadilla, we were together as quesadilla. It wasn't, it didn't feel like George and I, and then, oh, the three people that we brought in mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. we, it was a full alliance. And I think, especially being on Copaca, I got a lot closer to Lindsay and Taylor. Obviously, George chose to get um, closer to Jack. That is something um, I feel like a lot of what has been shown episodes one through three or so i just like want to make it clear all of the decisions between george and i were made together so when i told george that jack found out about like oh me being on keep your torch lit he kind of knows that we already know each other george and i sat down and we were like all right use this da 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 it was it was the two of us i i was there strategizing the entire time i wasn't just like often rhythm tap ensemble land i mean i was for like for a, a brief moment which people were asking about this in the discord as well rhythm tap ensemble a tap dance group university of michigan and we teamed up with groove which roger yeah. is on we teamed up with <laughs> groove which is more of a stomp-esque uh team or group and for mm -hmm. one of rhythm shows I actually helped to choreograph that dance with Groove and it was a good time. So that's what you see. You get a little sneak peek. And actually, fun fact, there is a future Survivor Michigan contestant also on that stage with me. I, I wonder who it is. I wonder. It is not, not Roger. It is not Roger. No, it's not Roger. It's not Roger. I'll tell you that right now. Um, no, I was jump scared. But like when I, because I was watching, I was, like, I was like, wait, that looks like Groove. And I was yeah. like, oh shit, it is. <laughs> yes yeah no and that was uh that was so sweet um that all of them came to see my show it was very much mm -hmm. it was giving ohana from season two um mm -hmm. our little tribe just became a quick little family very fast um but oh what was i saying oh yeah just like early on i i feel like i did not record as much the first few episodes because all of my talks and all of my strategy were with George at that point. So like ev every decision we made, we made together at that mm. point. Um, so that uh, wanted to clear that up. I also want to discuss the Anne week. Mm -hmm. the I was Anne about week. to ask about that. Were you? Yeah. Here, what questions do you have about that? Oh, well, I mean, I, I guess I was more just going to like ask in general. I think you, it sounded like you had a way you were going. So you can um, talk about that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, um, because the way, and apologies to any viewers who were like, no, Katie, this was made extremely clear. You don't need to clarify this. I'm going to clarify it. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> the way that I felt like it was edited and even watching Mason's exit interview, um, it's clear that it, it, not everyone knew what was actually happening. So Lindsay Taylor and I, very close at this point, we have the girls group chat with Ellie and Anne and there is maybe a full day and again this group chat kind of comes together maybe two days before tribal um that we have a full day where lindsey taylor and i are deciding what we want to do about it it is fully the three of us being like do we want to stick with the girls blindside the guys or do we want to stick with quesadilla and it was the three of us who decided no like we have a safe majority with the seven with quesadilla if we go with the girls now, we're immediately burning all of those bridges and putting ourselves like on the bottom, essentially, even though we technically would still have numbers. But there was at that point, Quesadilla was already such a solid alliance. We had all spoken to Anne separately and only a couple of us, me in particular, had spoken to Ellie individually that it just felt a little forced to go into that alliance versus what we had already established since like week two. Yeah. So ultimately Taylor, Lindsay and I decided, okay, let's tell the guys that this is what's happening. And we use that to put, use leverage to decide between Ellie and Anne who we wanted to vote off and using Anne going after Mason as uh, ammo to take Anne out. And again, because I thought at the time I was closer with Ellie, which you see the irony of it now. I fought to keep Ellie in and Ellie's the reason that I go home. <laughs> like it's mm. too good. You can't, you can't make that stuff up. But um, I, I feel like 
Mason, I think, said in his exit interview, like, okay, the guys got this. The no, it was Taylor Lindsay and I. I'm 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 claiming that right now, right there. As much as I hate to claim it, as much as I hate to say, no, we took Ann out. We all took Ann out. Yeah. But to right. the decision to steer away from the girls and stick with Quesadilla, stick with the seven, and then go from there was Taylor Lindsay and I. Right. And that's where that started. Um it's uh it's so unfortunate. You guys. You guys see my little clip of me holding up my book, Bad Feminist, and I'm, I'm, I'm so here funny. to write. I'm here to write some wrongs. I'm here to on my feminist high horse right now, and say Taylor Lindsay and I did that. It's the girls. It's I'm here for the mm. girls. I swear. It was just. It made more yeah, sense. No, for I mean, me. look, it sounded like a tough decision, so I yeah. I didn't hold anything against you for that. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, so going, I guess, Sophia, do you have anything kind of like pre-swap that you want to talk about? Because I think most of my questions are like after the swap. Pre-swap? Um, honestly, oh, I do have one casting question. Um, yeah. Were there any other producers that had never played at this point or was most of production for season six like an all the all-stars cast? I think I mm. I think I know part of this answer, but Katie can go because yeah, you, know, you asked her. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can jump in too, Roger, if you know the answer. But um go what I like I like think I have an idea, but I don't know for sure. I don't want to say okay. wrong information. Katie would actually know. <laughs> so at this point, no. Other, okay. well, like, producers that had applied, um, there was no one else that had not played that I can think of. What did happen were there some people who applied to season six who then became producers on season six. Shout out Brian. Shout, shout out Jared. Um, and uh, so they they kind of took my route where I was like, oh, I can't play. Let me produce and just insert my myself really? in the club this way. So immediately Brian Smythe became my favorite producer because I knew he took that route. And I was just like, heard i'm i'm there i'm right there with you i can you can be me one day brian i promise and you know what maybe he is spoiler alert who knows, who knows? um <laughs> to clarify for viewers because i know some viewers are mad at like oh like why are people on prod point like this is a very normal thing within like college survivor that like i don't think people realize because most college survivors are on like season two or three in in terms of like airing even with Marilyn, like i don't think you see it too often currently but like this is very common and like it's a club at the forefront and like we want to include people if someone doesn't get cast a lot of times they do join prod and sometimes play later that's just what happens private. yeah and because it's a college club i'm sorry i'm gonna get a little upset about this all that i've stayed silent on on the YouTube, on the Discord, or whatever, seeing people's comments about, oh my gosh, production is so corrupt. Oh my gosh, why are you letting producers mm -hmm. play? They obviously have an upper hand. This is a college club. Yeah. If you don't get cast on a season, but you still want to be part of the club, the next way to join is to join production. And then if it's still your dream to play, because hey, maybe it's your last semester in college, you're going to play. You're going to get to play because you put your time in at the club and you get to reward yourself by doing what you ultimately wanted to do at the end of the time. And we are college students when we are doing this. We are learning as we are going. George created this. It was him and Claire who put this together. Cooper and Matthew said, let's keep this going. This is a lot of fun. There was no guidebook. There was no rule book. We are making it up as we go. The shit with all stars. Are. Yes, still are. The shit with all stars, everyone, like, yes, it absolutely sucks. The integrity of the game, for sure, as a viewer, absolutely sucks. We learn from that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. any any question about production interference in this game, in this season right now, please be rest assured they were stricter than ever because of the shit that happened on all stars. And given that Ian Noah and I were producers on all stars, we knew just as much. There were moments that Ian 
might have been hearing shit, overheard shit because he lives with Cooper. He lives with John and, and Leia is we're all friends with them. And if they hear stuff, there were definitely active moments where we were like, no, we cannot hear this. We don't want any question about interference. We don't want to fuck with that. We don't yep. want to mess around with that because it fucked the shit up last time. We're not dealing with that. So please rest assured, we did not, us playing in the game would not allow that. People as producers would not allow that. It wasn't happening, okay? And yeah. Like, uh, feel however you want to feel about Noah, but just know the edit doesn't show everything. There were, it's more than one person who caused all of the commotion, okay? And I feel bad. Noah got all the heat for it because it, he was the only one on camera being talked about. And so that's just what gets put in the edit. But there were so many other things that were happening. It was a party. It was a house party full of people in the club. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it off at that. But like, and <clears throat> just like one final thing is like, we all take this like very, like seriously to an extent. We all are trying to get degrees um, at the University of Michigan, which we is are voluntarily amazing. doing this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, and production is in no way paid in no way. Like you are doing this out of the kindness of your heart and because we love to do it. So there are going to be mistakes. <laughs> um, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be things that go wrong. And like, at the end of the day, like if you want to see something that like is perfectly polished, go watch Jeff. Like Jeff it gets paid to do mm -hmm. this. There's, there's 45 paid. seasons of Survivor to watch if you don't want to watch this. Like yeah. but literally. We love um playing this game. We love making it and we're here to do it. We're learning, we're growing. So bear with us. <laughs> and I and again viewers y'all can feel how you want to feel you if you keep want to want to keep trolling in the comments you do you i see matthew israel in there shout out matthew israel in there backing people up responding to those comments um mm -hmm. i don't because i i don't want to get like shadow banned or like <laughs> kicked off for anything that i might say in response to some of these people but um you know y'all are still watching so <laughs> <laughs> sorry you about can it stop at any time if you're still watching it's on you yeah and and i i just again yeah people can feel how they want to feel i just felt like i needed to say that piece where it's like you the edit doesn't show everything yeah whatever you think is going on i guarantee there are ten thousand other factors that were going into different decisions being made and we're learning we mess up we fuck up and we learn and we bring it into the next season our lessons learned okay yeah. so just rest assured that there was no production interference oh okay rant oh, over God, we got that off our chest <laughs> got that off my chest i've been i've been saving that for how who knows how long with how many seasons have come out now but uh um, yeah, 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 yeah. And oh. Roger and Sophia, shout out to y'all for keeping the club alive and, and the rest of current uh current production. I, I hope y'all are still enjoying it. <laughs> and it's not and it's not too much. Uh okay. yeah. Um okay, yeah, I have a couple questions post swap. So I guess like once you once you get your like swap tribe, like what are you thinking at this point? Like do you, because obviously Ian is kind of like the like yeah. her, the obvious target. And like, let's forget about the fact that like he has an idol. I at least I assume that it's real. Um, let's forget about that fact. Like, well, what's going through your mind? Oh, I mean, so the way that it was doled out, right? I get on the tribe with Taylor Lindsay Ellie, and then Ian's the last one to join. Immediately, I'm just like, oh, bet. Like, I'm set. I'm chilling. But uh, then, immediately after, I'm like, Lindsay and Taylor don't know how close I am with Ian. And they, I mean, after the first week of being on Copaca, Lindsay hated Ian. And I'm just like, hmm, my work might be cut out for me. I might 
have to like I got to be careful how I'm going to play this because I don't want to stick my neck out too far for Ian that it jeopardizes my yeah, relationship yeah. with Taylor and Lindsay, who I've been working with since day one. And of course, I've been working with Ian since day one. But also, Ian and I, before going into the game, Ian looks at me, he's like, I will not vote you out pre-merge. Once we get to merge, every man for himself. And I'm like, so you're telling me right now, <laughs> you, you want to work with me from day one, but like not the whole time. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's going to make me trust you so much. Um, <laughs> but like, like I joke, but also like, uh, that's fair. Ian and I yeah. actually have such a similar outlook on the game too, where it's like, I can't help but like respect the way that he's upfront and honest about it. And it got to a point where I was just like, so done with trying to lie and trying to keep things from him that like, when we got on Kopaka, I told him, I was just like, I was like, eh, like, I hope you're an idol. Like, I don't like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, they're going to maybe push for you. Like, I'm going to do my best. But also, like, you work on your side. Like, you put the work in to get relationships with these people as well. Because if it's only me fighting for you, that's not going to work. I'm going to yeah. be honest. It's not going to yeah. work. Um, so, yeah, it was stressful. It was also wild, especially that first challenge, which Kopaka killed, by the way. Shout out Kopaka, the shortest, that up. the shortest and only one man on our team. And we won. I'm so proud of us for that. Um, but Ian just blatantly shouting out to his old tribe to throw it. And I'm sitting there another Ian and I are like brother and sister. And more often than not, he does annoy me um, to the point where I need to like yell at him to be quiet. So <laughs> The amount of effort that it took for me in those moments when he was just outwardly talking to Sokka and just being so blatantly like Ian about things and for me to not just be like, Ian, stop or like, Ian, you're being too much because I can't, people don't know we're like that. So that was, I think there's one clip in uh, the sandbag challenge where Ian's like, it's all about the grip. It's all about the grip. And I just look at him and I go, it's not. And I'm like that, I was like, okay, that's where... The filter did not filter. The filter did not work. And I fully just, I rolled my eyes and looked at that man. And I was just like, shut up. <laughs> it's like, so that was like a fun, interesting dynamic to add to Kopaka. But it was definitely a tricky situation. My my goal was to hope that we would just keep winning and get to the merge. And then mm -hmm. I would worry about it then. I wouldn't have to worry about voting anyone on that tribe off because I didn't want to. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks when you get put on a tribe with, like, people that you all like. And then you're like, ooh, we lost a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Now I have to pick which one of you to vote off. And you're like, mm. wow. Well, and that's another reason as to why I feel like I was so okay in this episode going to tribal. Because we hadn't been to tribal yet as Kopaka. Yeah. And we weren't going as only Kopaka. Yeah. So I was like, right, there yeah. are more opportunities now if we go to tribal now for us to vote to for us to keep all of Kopaka mm -hmm. and vote mm -hmm. someone else out. Like that is the only scenario where it made sense for me to try to go to tribal with Kopaka at that point. Yeah. Um because even I mean, at, at this point, I feel like we can also talk a little bit about episode seven because it's aired already. Have you guys watched episode seven? No. Personally, have not. <laughs> Okay, never mind then. I won't say anything. It's been a week. <laughs> it's been a busy week. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. But um, I'm sure you guys could talk about it. Just like, this isn't spoilers, but like the, the fallout of my being voted out is like a lot of the first part of that episode. And I was just going to mention like, there's, yeah, there's still, ugh. well, can I tell you guys one thing? Go for it. Okay. Jury starts next vote. Mm, I got wow. voted off the vote right before jury starts. It's giving. Wow. <laughs> merge, merge doesn't even happen. That's a, a little fun little twist about season six. But jury starts next vote. Dang. That's yeah. rough. Quirky. <laughs> Quirky. Oh my God. It, it That broke me. That broke me a little bit, if I'm being completely Damn. honest. Um, in hindsight, it was okay because mm -hmm. if I was on jury, 
I wouldn't be able to talk to George, Lindsay, Taylor, Jack about any of the game. I wouldn't be able to hang out with Ian and yeah. they were all still going to be hanging out and playing. Right. Um, so that actually might've been harder, but at least because I wasn't on jury, I like, uh, you see a clip of the four of them post when I'm voted out and I'm the one filming it. Like I'm there chilling with them. Yeah. I still get to hang out. So like to that point, it was beneficial and it was good. Oh yeah. But, as as a survivor fan and as a longtime producer to be that sucks it was yeah. the most upsetting probably more upsetting than being voted out was realizing that i i did not get to be a part of the season anymore and mm. <laughs> to be post to be pre-merged to be like all of this stuff it was that was a hard pill to swallow for sure mm -hmm. yeah i can't imagine that yeah. um let's see okay so we find out in episode six kind of just like randomly that ian like has the obsidian idol oh yeah and <laughs> so like at any point did ian like hint mention this at no. all did you just have like no idea no idea no zero zilch um yeah i when i found that out because also after this, after episode six, we go on spring break. And so Ian and I were on spring break together a full week in Puerto oh, wow. Rico. Yeah. I'm not sure if he told me then. Ooh, the canon, the canon um, Survivor Michigan event. Yeah, canon. <laughs> yeah, spring break yeah. in Puerto Rico. Um, which actually, fun fact, on our, in the airport, um, flying to Puerto Rico, Juan runs into us. But at the time, we didn't know who he was. He wasn't part of the club or anything. But he comes up and goes, are you Cooper from Survivor Michigan? And literally asks to take a picture with Cooper. And all of us are just immediately roll our eyes and are like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. There's no way Cooper is like celebrity enough to be known <laughs> in an airport and ask That's for a photo. Crazy. That's ridiculous. That's so funny because Cooper is just like white guy number four. But... <laughs> Just Literally. because he happens to be good at Survivor, it's like, are you Cooper? Because he was a host and all this stuff. Well, and and it's just even funnier now knowing who that Juan joins Survivor Michigan community and like looking back, it's like, oh, that's that's who that was, and who did that. And we were going to Puerto Rico. Juan's from Puerto Rico, so like it makes sense that we ran into him there. But like, it was a wild time. Anyway, <laughs> um, like yeah. So I I did not know about Ian having the Obsidian Idol. I mean, if I had had any inkling, we wouldn't have gone through all the trouble of the Google form and the, yeah, yeah, trying to figure all of that out. Right before Tribal, Ian did, so you see Ian and Noah do eventually share that they have their idols and it actually, they share that with each other before the Tribal in episode six, before my mm -hmm. Tribal. Right before that Tribal, Ian texts me, Noah has an idol, he just showed me. So I'm going out with that information, but right before tribal, I show Lindsay and Taylor that text. Mm. So mm. that is how knowledge of Noah's idol got leaked to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, and that was all right before my tribal. But yeah, sorry, that to answer your question, I had zero idea at all. It was, and the fact that he found it like week two or three i think it was week three just mm. insane insane uh yeah i don't know if i have any more questions i guess just kind of like let me see we haven't I... talked that much about the fact that like ellie just um like flipped from obsidian to the soccer people i don't know if there's yeah. much to ask about that but okay. like i guess how, like what i don't know like yeah just do you have anything on that kind of like what was the development of that yeah actually this is this is good because i i know i touched on it a little bit the order of operations for this tribal because it really was we had that whole week where people were kind of like chilling like it, most of the week was noah Lindsay, ian and i kind of we had sat down and we were like okay so everyone's good with ellie sounds good okay leave it at that let the week happen 
And then throughout the week, more and more, you know, everyone's getting antsy. It's like, wait, could we make a move? Could we not? All of this stuff. Taylor, Lindsay, and I don't think, um, don't know if we can trust Sokka. So we come up with the plan to put votes, five votes on someone else, tie the vote at first to see if they're actually voting Ellie or not. And throughout that, um, Taylor and I actually sit down, you see a clip of it a little bit, but that's when we're sitting down and kind of going through every single name on old Sokka and figuring out who we could get, like who we want to put votes on. There was a moment where Grace was the name that we were going to put votes on. We tried Lindsay A, but it ultimately came down to Justin was who we needed Mm -hmm. for the fifth vote. We couldn't trust Ian. And it eventually came out through Justin that Ian was voting with Old Sokka and they were going to write one of our names down. So we needed Justin's vote to tie it. And the only person on Sokka that Justin would write down was Ian. So, and and at that point, Ian is kind of like, it seems like Ian's kind of flipping on us. So we're like, okay, yeah, Ian, that works. Um, and all this is before the plan that you and Ian come up with to vote each correct. other. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> There's a chat with Justin and I. Um, and, and here's the thing. Lindsay and Justin were extremely close. I'm not sure how well that's come across in the edit for people, but like within Quesadilla, we all kind of felt like we had a handle on other people outside of it. Um, Taylor and I having the connection with Noah Mm -hmm. Um, obviously me and Ian, George and Ian, um, Taylor and I were kind of the only two who really talked to Ellie very much at this point. And I, I know I personally felt very like protective and kind of like older sister towards Ellie. Um, and so I, I kind of, but I definitely like looking back on it, I definitely did not play that relationship well enough. I definitely should have put them more in the center of my, my information circle and like keeping them up to date. But it was just tough because we were potentially writing Ellie's name down. Um, so, and I'm not yeah. that great at lying. My goal is like, I'm only going to tell you things that I can convince myself are true. So when I'm telling you, it comes across as genuine. Like I can't, otherwise I'm not, I'm just not saying anything. Um, But, and that, so, and then Lindsay and Justin, um, and that was always, Lindsay was always getting information from Justin and sharing it with us. And Justin was telling Lindsay almost everything. I think there's a clip a couple episodes back where Justin's like, um, you're my number one or something like that to Lindsay. So that's that's where they're at at this point. And that's also what helps us bring loop Justin in. Lindsay and Justin's connection is what helps us like guarantee that Justin is gonna be with us for this mm-hmm. vote at yeah. this point. And because Noah, Grace and Ian just kind of berate Justin near the end there. Um, and, but so the plan to split the votes, um, initially is just to confirm for us who Sokka is voting essentially. And that is the plan before the bomb is dropped. Yep. Yep. Then. So then the order of operations is it's day of tribal. I like early on in the day, I meet with Ian. I'm convincing him that we're still writing Ellie's name down. It's no, it's no big deal. Like we're writing Ellie's name down, knowing that we're writing his name down, but with the goal of just flipping on a revote. It, as long as Sokka is telling the truth, we'll flip on the revote, but we're just saving our asses right now because in the right. event that we all vote Ellie and Sokka's trying to scheme something, we're just, we're playing it safe. Yeah. Um, but then like three hours before tribal ian comes over and he actually i just rewatched the the clip he is trying i guess he comes in with the thought of you're hiding something and that i'm gonna admit george and i but i first admit that we're writing his name down and like that's the plan that i reveal to him at first Mm -hmm. and that's actually where we end up calling Lindsay to tell Lindsay, like, hey, Ian knows. 
I wanted to tell Ian ahead of time because I didn't want him to be surprised that his name showed up. Um, and just to reassure him that it was just to save our asses. And he understood once I explained the whole plan, he understood. And then we call Lindsay and kind of like, take care of it, whatever. And then he goes, before I leave, like, he's like, do you want to be honest with me? And I'm like, I just told you everything. What are you talking about? And then he tells me, I know about you and George, by the way, Grace and Noah know about you and George. Oh, by the way, they're planning to tell everyone and turn this all around on you and get everyone to flip on you. And that's where I'm like, this is three hours before tribal. And I'm like, hmm. And you're like, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Um, and that's where Ian and I sit down because I already know we like we are putting votes on Ian. And mm -hmm. Ian's kind of like, if I'm going to be honest, I can't get them to switch their votes off of you at this point. And that's where we're like, I had already, when, um, when I knew we were putting votes on Ian, before I knew that I was getting votes, I had already thought of, well, in worst case scenario, no one flips, Ian's safe and rocks. So then mm -hmm. it's fine. So then when we realized both of our names are being written down, we're like, wait, we, we could attempt to go to rocks and we would both be immune in that case. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, again, this is all assuming, I mean, all week I've been throwing Ian under the bus to Ellie. Uh, we, we went idle searching with Ellie. That was all completely genuine. I'm keeping Ellie in the loop. At least again, our plan is to write Ian. I was telling Ellie, maybe they could talk to Lindsay Adams and flip Lindsay Adams on, um, on a revote or something. So going into like, that was all of my conversations with Ellie up until that point. Um, so Ian tells me that, you know, let's try this. We, we try this rock plan. And that's when he goes to meet Noah and Grace, because he's telling me, he's like, they're literally about to go and drop the bomb. And I'm like, okay, go, go drop the bomb, get your people on your side. Lindsay will, Lindsay will talk to Justin. We'll make sure Justin's with us. We'll make sure Ellie's with us. I, I feel I, at this point, I felt confident that Lindsay Taylor and Ellie were hands down with me. Mm -hmm. Um, there was hesitation about, I was like, shoot, if every, if Noah's telling everyone, should I tell Lindsay and Taylor? Like that was a discussion between Ian and I, should I tell Lindsay and Taylor before Noah gets to them? And we discussed that. And I decided like, yeah, that's going to be, best case scenario mm -hmm. coming from me. So, but because again, it's three hours before tribal Taylor's in a class, Lindsay. So I try to get to them. And that's a clip that you see of me FaceTiming Taylor, talking to Lindsay. I FaceTime George and tell George everything beforehand. And so he takes care of his side of like, all right, I guess I'll tell Jack that way. It doesn't come out like right after tribal. And Jack is the only one in the dark at that point. Uh -huh. um, and Thank God for Lindsay and Taylor because they were the sweetest human beings and they were just like, oh, wait, that's so cute. You guys are dating. That's adorable. But again, in the mess of the situation, I did not think about looping Ellie in to mm. that. I was about to ask. Yes. So... Because we had already had a meeting scheduled for me, Lindsay, Taylor, Noah, and Ian right before tribal, the five of us to come together. And that's when Noah was going to drop the bomb and all of this stuff. But Ian's texting me while he's at the union talking to dropping it to Justin, Lindsay, Adams, Grace, uh, Thagis, Grace. Um, and he's texting me. He's like, all right, everyone's like, on your side. I don't know about Justin, but Justin seems to be with you guys. He's super hesitant. And I'm like, perfect. That's great. What I didn't know until after tribal was that Noah and Ian went to Ellie right before tribal. Like that clip of them was five minutes before tribal. Wow. So there was no time at that point for me to go to Ellie and try to right. like, we were getting set up for tribal. Ellie walked in and that's when I go up to Ellie and I'm like, Hey, have you heard George and I are dating? And Ellie's like, yeah, like all good. Don't worry. And I'm like, awesome. Justin walks in and I give him a look and he goes, and I'm like, cool, great. 
And even Ellie's responses during tribal, I was like, sweet. Ellie's on yeah, and... yeah. So it's, I definitely did not do as good of a job as like keeping Ellie in the loop, making Ellie feel like I was looking out for them. I tried to push it so much. Like I, I made sure we didn't, like people didn't vote you and voted Anne that one week. I, I want you mm -hmm. in the game. I like working with you, all mm -hmm. of this stuff. But it, at a certain point, it did just become so clear that Lindsay and Taylor were my priority. And and I, I don't blame I don't blame Ellie at all because absolutely it makes sense for their game at that point. Um Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just it just sucks <laughs> though. <laughs> Cause it did it did feel like it was going to at least tie the first time. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. was really surprised that it didn't because like when I when I was watching, I was like, okay, let me not look at the time to see like if um if it's gonna go to a revote or not because you right. know usually you can tell with that. So I was like, let me surprise myself, and then I was like, I kind I think I just assumed it was gonna tie, so I was like skipping ahead, and then I was like, Katie's, I was like, oh, so then I like went back, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what happened? And I was like, oh, there like there wasn't a revote day. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. But it was, I definitely like freshly after tribal, when I found out that Noah and Ian had gone straight to Ellie, I mean, Ian, <laughs> Ian was still like low key playing the game with me after the fact, like it was almost like he didn't want me to get so mad about how much he was involved with getting me out. Um, uh -huh. cause he was like, I mean, I had to, if Noah wanted to go and tell Ellie, like I had to go along with it there, like for his sake of staying on good terms with, and like not making Noah think he was trying to save me. He had to go along right. with um, yeah. the whole thing. And I'm like, mm. yeah, that makes sense. But it was just five minutes before tribal. It was, yeah, it was tough. And I've talked to Ellie yeah. since as well. And cause I think about, you know, I, I was so overwhelmed and so awkward during that tribal because a, it's like a brand new relationship. I don't feel like talking about it, right? but it's the center of conversation and yeah. it's affecting my game and people are making these wild ass assumptions about me. And here's the thing. I was so real. I would have voted George out down the line. Absolutely. Um, like everyone can say like, oh yeah, you say that now, hindsight's 2020. And I was like, no, I'm being so for real. I wouldn't have written his name down, but I would have helped to scheme. I would have been okay with other people mm -hmm. taking him out. Like I knew that that was going to have to be something that needed to happen if I wanted to stay in the game. And I told, again, George and I at the beginning of the season, I was like, I'm playing this game to play this game. Like this is so... It, it does suck that I had to be the only female producer on the season. Definitely, I'm a to my own horn. Definitely the most connected on this season. And we can talk about yeah. the producer connection ahead of time, the pre-gaming, whatever. But if you think about it, this season, there were loads of connections. Pages and Justin knew each other previously. Jack and T-Rex, yeah, they weren't super close. Noah and Taylor, Taylor also had that connection, right? And Honestly, suffice to say, Taylor and Noah at a certain point were closer than I was with Noah. She was talking to him more than I was at a certain point. Mm -hmm. I was I was getting stuff about him through Ian, mm -hmm. but like I wasn't talking directly with Noah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's like we live on a college campus. A yeah. lot of people are upperclassmen in this season. There's mm -hmm. people are a part of loads of different clubs. Overlap is going to happen. Yes, like we viewers have... are. At... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Continue. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say viewers are acting like this hasn't happened before. Literally, the Alexes in season one lived together. Like, I mean, I'm sure people were like, "Oh, like maybe that's not the most first thing in the world," but like it happened, and people really didn't care that much. Whereas this, I feel like it's the same thing. People know each other. It's impossible to avoid, and other people know each other too. So like, it happens, and I think like. And exactly. also, it's not like you guys are all working together. Like, it's like there yeah. is very clear, like, like there's one winner. And I think especially with producers, I think it's almost like this urge to like go after each other sooner than later, because if you're not the first one to strike, it's the other person. 
Exactly. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And I felt that week one when I realized Noah was lying to me. I was like, oh, okay, we we're do we're playing the game. We're we're mm -hmm. we're not doing this already. This isn't this isn't mm -hmm. that real. Okay, got it. And that's extremely like I was closer to Quesadilla than I was to Ian and Noah mm -hmm. at a certain point. Absolutely. So you know, like, and I think that is of course we're not dumb. We're not going to not use our connections when it benefits us, but we're also right. smart enough to acknowledge that it would not make sense for us to cut all of the new people out. Exactly. Working with them. Like, yeah. So it's like, there's other connections. Of course, we, we have the benefit of like knowing that we were going to be playing ahead of time. And all that really did was just give us an opportunity to figure out how we were going to quote unquote hide that we knew each other. And guess what? That lasted it didn't work. <laughs> two weeks. That lasted two weeks. It it immediately became an even heel game, like right off the bat. Like mm. you can talk about being on production, being a benefit, but like we again, our producer friends aren't telling us anything. We've yeah. been on production, so we know that literally anything can happen. And we can't it we can't anticipate anything. Like, yeah, we were like, oh, scavenger hunt's probably gonna come up. But that doesn't necessarily give us anything to prepare no. for. Like both Ian and I during the scavenger hunt week were actually extremely busy. I was unavailable one full day. Ian was unavailable one full day. Like it scheduling and everything, like. I didn't even get to compete in a challenge week two because of my own other stuff. So it's like, there's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just realized I'm starting to go on another production rant, but. Uh, <laughs> You're good. You're good. We, yeah. I think we, we've got most of that out there. They know. <laughs> so. Yeah, 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 exactly. And oh. it's, uh, I, I forget what your question was, honestly, but like. It, I don't remember either. Oh, I was saying, I was talking about the tribal. I was talking about me being voted out, having the producers, but it's like, it, it sucks to be the first one. And you're going to, you also want to be the first one to take the shot because if you're not, someone else is going to take that shot first. All, all right. of that. And so it's like, yeah, only female producer being taken out. Um, and definitely most connected in the game. Yeah. Like as connected as everyone else was, I definitely had like George and Ian kind of I like I was closer to all of my connections at a certain point um oh, than okay. anyone else was. And I don't even know if that made sense the way I, that I said it. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just rambling at this point. Do you guys have Very any good. other questions? No, Sophia, do you have any more questions? I'm um, kinda I think I'm good. Let me see. I'm pulling up. There might have been some from Discord that. Yeah. Um, mm. oh, Ian had said that he auditioned for season four. Did I audition for any previous seasons? I I meant to apply for season one, but missed the deadline. Um, and then I just joined production on season two when Cooper kept it going. And so I had not actually applied for any any seasons. I knew once we were deep enough into production and we knew all stars was going to happen fall semester or senior year, I was like, okay, I'll just wait. I don't want to play with all of my friends. I want to yeah. like stand alone by myself, which then of course I end up playing with freaking Ian and stuff. But, um, so no, I had not auditioned, um, or <laughs> tried out auditioned, applied, <laughs> whatever term you want to use. Um, do I feel like I would have had an advantage when the season switched to online due to my experiences on 2.5 to uh, 4.5? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. When it does switch online, which it'll be interesting to see. I have no idea. I will say that's also going to be a fun thing for me. I actually don't know how the rest of this, like I know who wins. I know roughly when people get voted out, but I actually don't know a lot of the strategy or much that goes into mm -hmm. the rest of the game. So I will be very excited to see how that plays out. But absolutely. Oh, if I was some of the challenges playing um, previous online games, I I would have, I would have been set. And especially because it's a pandemic, I didn't have anything else to do. I would have been putting in so much more time into survivor than I was at this point in right. the game. 
yeah, that would have been, that would have been iconic. Um, what was my personal favorite moment from the first five seasons as someone who was present for nearly all of it? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a hard question. Personal favorite moment. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to be honest, like it would have to be sometime during All Stars because it was so much fun having all of my friends. Like it wasn't fun to watch all of my friends like go after each other and kind of like yeah. break each other's hearts. Um, but this is going to be so mean of me. But the tribal in All Stars, when it was two tribes going together, top two vote getters get voted out. And it was almost Cooper. That was uh, that honestly, been funny. That was honestly really exhilarating. That was me. Ian oh and I God. just constantly, their entire house was always like, is Cooper getting out yet? Is Cooper getting voted out yet? And I mean, that was an intense tribal. That was crazy. So, I mean, one of the first times I'd ever seen Cooper cry. Um, so that was oh. wild. Um, Side question. Have you yeah. seen Cooper cry since then? Yes. Hmm. But <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Only like related to Survivor. This man is a robot. He does not. He only gets emotionally invested when it's about a game, I guess. Um, but like quite literally, maybe only once since then. Yeah. he His emotions are in check or non-existent whichever way you want to put it um so, sorry coop um <laughs> uh i would also say like that that was fun that was wild i think ultimate favorite like season two i i want to say just being on production of all of season two that was because that was such a big learning moment for a lot of us it was a smaller production crew um and we really got to bond with the season two cast. I mean, to this day, most of my best friends from this club were season two people, Bailey, Nick, Bree, Sam, Maggie. Um, and that like, I think that was the season where it was still so new for everyone that we really were just kind of having fun every single time we got together. There wasn't this stress about making sure everyone, I mean, we made sure everyone was filming, but it wasn't so much like, yo guys get on it like where is this person like what's going on with this challenge who's the challenge leader like all like you know yeah. all of those, you guys can yeah. relate yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I, I know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> but it so uh, like i would say all of season two production though is definitely probably like the more the fondest memories that i have mm. from that um uh why do you feel Ian was so dead set on exposing you in George instead of forming a producer super alliance? So I, I feel like I kind of answered that already. The goal was a producer super alliance. I mean, that's what we went into the game with thinking that like all four of us were together, but we, we also didn't take advantage of it early on because we all wanted to like focus on making our own alliances in our own tribes. So then, I mean, from Ian's perspective, he's thinking I'm his number one and he realizes I'm, in a show like uh dating someone right. he and immediately he feels betrayed he's like oh she's my number one but i'm not her number one so yeah. like mm -hmm. but he did sit on this for multiple weeks again ian and noah ian told noah week two ian and noah knew this from week two mm -hmm. and have been sitting on it waiting for the right time because they knew it was not to their benefit to get me out or like use it when like I think Ian's ideal situation is use it during the merge. Mm -hmm. But then right. it this tribal came up and it was just, again, we had yeah. a week, we were getting antsy. Noah was so antsy. According to Ian, Noah was like raving about dropping it every single week. And he was just like, <sighs> when can we spill this secret? We kind need of. to spill the tea. Yeah. And it wasn't so much like so dead set on it, like exposing us to get me out but more so just like like i i don't know i i asked them this and i feel like the answer changes every time i asked noah and ian this it's like okay 
obviously if George was at that tribal, George probably would have been targeted and gone mm-hmm. home. But if it came down to merge and it was dropped and George and I were both still in the game, who would be the target for it? And honestly, like I was more connected. I was like a stronger social player and people trusted me more. I mean, I think you can tell Lindsay going to bat for me, Taylor willing to go to rocks for me. Like they were definitely more with me. We were all quesadilla, but they were more with me than they were with George at that point. So it, yeah, it, it sucks because it was kind of like luck of the draw of like which one of us was at a tribal where it affected it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think like Ian wasn't so dead set on it, if I'm being completely honest. Mm-hmm. Like he he wanted to use it. He didn't want to use it the same way Noah wanted to use it. And it just blew up mm. the way. that it did. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening to me rant about <laughs> all of this because it's been, it's a long time coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this You've been four, holding us in for like years. Like, four years. Imagine. Four years. Sebastian was here for it all. Love you, Sebastian. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, just excited to see the rest of the season, see how it mm-hmm. plays out. Yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a tell y'all right now, if I was on jury, who knows what would have happened. But I guess be grateful I'm not because it might have been more drama. Yeah, guess, you know? um, yeah. um, well, it would have been fun. But Katie, thank you for uh, sharing this with us. And yes, we love you hearing your on. thoughts. Um, seeing you play is so fun. Um, thank you. Yeah. I know we didn't meet till like after you played and, you know, after you graduated and stuff, but like so fun seeing you play. I was like, that's my friend. (laughs) I do actually question for you guys on honest opinions of my gameplay. Give give it to me right now. I, I mean, like, I really enjoyed it. I feel like you came in with like a good relationship with or like, like with all the producers, you obviously have Ian and you have George. You did as much as you could with Noah. You got yourself into a solid alliance with the KCD of Five. I think like you had a tough decision to go either with the girls or with KCD of Five. And probably, I think made probably the best decision. You don't want to piss off Jack and George. I think that was just so solid that there was no reason to not to do that or no reason to go against them. Then once you swap, I mean, you did like, as much as you could with that that's just kind of a like weird swap where you really couldn't build any allies because like you were already allied with everyone on your tribe yeah. and i think like <laughs> like all i would say is like better management of ellie but like that's just kind of like nitpicking because that's what got you out yeah understandable well i i appreciate that roger <laughs> yeah um like seconding everything roger said i like honestly was shocked you went pre-merge i was like oh, yeah, oh. Me too. like katie's so well connected like yes she started off as a producer but also like she has this type on with Lindsay and taylor and i'm like those three are gonna like rock the game like mm-hmm. um but I think it also is just like a stroke of bad survivor luck where it's just like, oh, you know, there was this double tribal, thought it was going to work out, didn't. And it happens all the time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I really hope I didn't like look like a fool on on TV no, for worry. all these people. Um I, I feel like you mentioning Lindsay and Taylor just reminded me of this one other question. Someone asked me on Discord is like, who would have my final three, my ideal final three been? Um, mm. Definitely. I I am of the opinion. I love a good final tribal where you could honestly see both or all three people winning to a certain extent, yeah. like all have mm-hmm. like similar level of gameplay. Mm-hmm. So I think if I could have Taylor, Lindsay and I, would have been an ideal because then guarantees a female winner. Um, yeah. And I think Taylor talks about it briefly in one of the previous episodes. She and I played a very similar game. 
Can we talk about though the fact that Taylor goes, the difference is Katie's strategic and I am not. And <laughs> I'm just like, as she then continues to talk strategy, like know, about how worried. she's like, taking out Taylor. <laughs> oh, Taylor. And I'm just like, I know, really I guess, actually, that's a good kind of like question. Is like, were were you worried that they were going to cut you at all? Because obviously, it was in the minds of at least Taylor. I don't know about Lindsay, but like, were you ever concerned that they might turn on you at some point? It was something that I would have worried about once once I hit merge mm -hmm, kind right, of thing. Okay, like I I felt so solid. Like at at this point in the game, my goal was just like just get to merge. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And that like like baby steps. Get to merge. Avoid being the first voted out on your tribe. Check. Okay. Now like get to the swap. Check. Okay. Now get to merge. Kind of thing. Um and I definitely I mean, I'm sure I would have considered taking Taylor out depending on how the game would have unfolded. Um if if I caught wind, I definitely wanted Noah out. Uh and then if Noah was out, that would leave Taylor more room to come to me as an ally because I knew her and I shared Noah as an ally there. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely used that connection to try and pitch Grace to Taylor. I was like, listen, if we cut Grace, Noah and Grace are like this. That gives us – that." I told Taylor, I was like, that gives you an opportunity to become Noah's number one if we cut Grace like that. Um, so it's – yeah, I mean, it's something that I'm sure – any smart survivor player is going to consider everyone, but the, I, I, because I love when you can go up against someone and it's, and it's a fair fight. I I'm not a huge yeah, fan of bringing no. a goat. I, yeah. I know, I know it's like the smart play maybe with the final three bringing one goat, but like make it so that the other person, because then I mean, I don't know. It's the lifelong debate of like, it's smart gameplay to bring goats when you know you're going to win. But then I'm like, does the win feel that like justified? Like, yes, because you took out all your threats, but also, but yeah. also then it's like, who else are your threats going to vote for at the end? If you're just sitting next to goats, yeah, that's like, so it's kind of like, there's, do they are, do they really think you played the best game? If you're the only one up there who played the game. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I know we, this has been already so long of a thing. Um, did George and I plan on telling everyone at some point? I think that's another like big question. I, I don't think that's something George and I ever considered, I, if I'm being completely honest. Like, again, maybe once we got to merge, if it made sense. Um, but at this point in the game, no, there was no consideration because I was already just like, so in with Taylor and Lindsay and yeah, George was already right. so in with Jack that we were like, we, like our relationship is like, honestly, aside I mean, from this yeah. point, yeah. like we've got our own things going. Uh, so yeah. Um, I feel like most of the other stuff discord asked, or at least the questions you sent us, we covered kind of covered. Um, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Well, yeah. I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time to, let me nice. go through all of this and I'd appreciate your guys' interest and in, like asking questions and wanting to hear all of this because sometimes it can definitely mm. feel like who cares? This is four years ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like being on production now, like every other conversation you have with someone is hashing out like, oh, if so and so did this and I wouldn't have gone home that week. So it's like Hearing it from someone that I haven't heard all of their stories from is like refreshing yeah. in a way. <laughs> sure. I can imagine. I can imagine that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the number of times I have heard I've had to rehash season six with mm -hmm. Ian and Noah. And it gets to a point where if we're all hanging out, because yeah, fun fact, guys, we're all still friends. Don't worry. Um <laughs> the uh the number of times that I just have to be like, y'all can go talk merch i'm done <laughs> i was like i'm done like if y'all want to go talk merge where i'm not a part of it y'all can go do that <laughs> go have fun another benefit of me being out this early is like there's so much game that they can keep rehashing that i have no mm -hmm. part of and i don't have to do that <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so oh well as a fun announcement as the end of this if you've made it all the way to the end first of all <laughs> first of all i'm proud you. of you yeah. We love Katie as I'm much surprised as I made it to the end of this. Um, 
I know got so this chair off. is just like no, this chair is not good for back support. Oh. I need to get a new chair. Um, but <laughs> some exciting things is that uh Katie will be joining our season six KYTL Sorry, you... hosting team for some of the exit interviews. Um so that we can have more of like an inside scoop on things because the reality of the situation is Roger and I were not there for season six. Um, so we don't have as many insider tips. And we were like, Katie is super cool. We love her. We want to bring her on to give us the inside scoop for you all. Um, so Roger and I will still be breaking down the main episodes, bringing in some special guests here and there. But on your exit interviews, Katie will be with us. You might be seeing more of me. I said, how can I stay relevant? now that I'm out. <laughs> How can I keep going? And yeah, very excited, happy to help with scheduling because I know everyone is a little bit busy. So it definitely helps to have uh, an extra person on hand who can hopefully um, help out with all of that. And yeah, like I said, I don't really know much of this post my vote out. I don't know much of what happens in the rest of the game. So I'll be excited. I'll definitely have questions for my fellow season six castmates for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, well, Katie, thank you again. Um, yes, thank so you, nice Katie. having you, so nice chatting. And um, to all of our viewers at home, get excited for more episodes of KYTL coming your way. They might be out of order, just a <laughs> heads up. Um, but oh, how are they? Are they gonna be out of order? I mean. I will put five, six, seven right after each other, but like exit interviews might be out of order. Oh, oh okay. I was okay. like, why would you put six before five? Okay, whatever. But remember to keep your torch lit. Thanks for watching. We'll see okay. you next time. <laughs> Bye.